Hello and welcome to Fusion Fundamentals with me MJ. Today we are going to be making a little pencil holder and then 3D printing it. So we can just get a look at how we can design something and it can be useful to us. So let's get started. So I'm going to start this one off by creating a sketch on the top plane, something I usually do, and then C for center diameter circle, or you can click up at the top there, and we'll start that at the origin, and it'll be 50 millimeters. Then I'm gonna go create polygon, and this is gonna be a circumscribed polygon. So I'm just gonna attach it to this line over here. I'm just gonna do it slightly off so you can see the effect of our horizontal constraint just now. So this is gonna come out and it'll be 7.5 millimeters and that'll give us a diameter of uh, 15. So there we've got that defined. I'm gonna create a horizontal constraint to get that horizontal, that top line. And then we'll do another horizontal constraint between the center of our polygon and the center of our circle. Next, we'll select offset I'll do an offset on here of two millimeters. So we're gonna extrude this portion up. Now what we could do is we could pattern it here in this workspace, or we can pattern it in the solid workspace, which is what I'm gonna do. So finish sketch. Now we can extrude our body. So we're gonna select our polygon there and extrude that up to 80 millimeters. So that gives us our single pencil holder part. I'm gonna turn our sketch back on so we can see our circle. And then we will go uh, create pattern and circular pattern. We're gonna be patterning this body and the axis will be our central axis there. And I want there to be enough so that they're just touching. So we're gonna go with eight. Okay. Next, we're gonna create another sketch on the top plane. And then I'm gonna press P and project this line over here. Cause my new polygon that I draw here is gonna to be touching that line. So create polygon circumscribed and let that line touch there. And we'll change this. So I just press tab so we can get that number. So tab and eight. So now you can see our polygon fits nicely in the middle there. I'll do an offset and minus two. Okay, so now we can extrude that up to this height and move on to the next step. So we'll extrude And we'll make that 80 so everything's flush on top so we can see we've got that all in one body it should be one body over here yes so, so it's all one body got a couple of pencil holders and then a central thing for I don't know like a ruler or something but we still need to make a bottom so I'm gonna create another sketch we could have done this in far fewer sketches but you know I enjoy making sketches and we're gonna select this whole profile like that now finish sketch, I want to extrude. I can select all of these as well as the bottom. I'm going to leave these little gaps there so we can see through and it's going to be minus two millimeters. So, okay. Now we've got those little gaps there that go all the way through. Okay, final step, we're gonna create another sketch that cuts through this and gives us sort of a wavy curve shape over there. So create sketch, just wanna get hold of this front plane here. And let me P for project, I'm gonna project this corner because that's where I'm gonna start my spline tool. So we'll select spline tool and we'll just start making a wave shape. And 
that's good. Now L for line tool. So we just need to make a closed profile so that we can extrude this. And there we go. So that's our closed profile. Now finish sketch. Last extrude we're going to do is press extrude. And direction will be symmetric. So as I, once I've selected my profile, as I drag it out one side, it'll drag out the other side equally. So we'll do that. And it's a cut operation. Let's see, do I like that? It's quite weird, but it's also kind of cool. But I'm happy with this. So let's just turn off our sketches. Try to get a better view of what it'll look like. I really hope this works. Let me just see how tall that is. That is 56. So that's tall enough to keep a pen in place. Now we're going to export this and put it in our slicer. So we'll go File, Export. And I'm just going to export it to my desktop pencil holder. Export. Perfect. Now let's go into the slicer. So I'm going to drag and drop here. I've got my default settings. Um, if you've watched the previous video, you'll know my extruder is under extruding. So I've set my outer flow or the wall flow or well, just the total flow really to be 175% of normal and it actually turns out pretty good. So let's do this. I'm just going to change the orientation because I've got my seam at the back. So the seam, the Z seam will be running up the side there. Let's slice it and let me just go through the settings. Layer height, initial layer height, that's good. Walls, there's two walls. Um, I want to make sure that we've got enough surfaces. So let's just make that two. I don't need three. And bottom layers, we can also do three. We don't need so many. And ironing, we've got ironing enabled. So I've set my ironing flow to 65%, which is probably closer to, I don't know, 20 or 30% uh, due to the under extruding. I will eventually get around to sorting that out, but for now I'm getting decent prints. In full 40, we can drop that down to 20. And material temperatures, there we good. Print speed 50, it's a nice slow printer I've got. Contraction, I had to increase the retraction speed because it was I was getting a lot of stringy bits. And support, we don't need any support, so let's slice it. 13 hours, so we'll put this on, come back tomorrow and see what we got. Okay, so we started off with our drawing here and we ended up with a nice little pencil holder. It's a lot better than what I've currently got and my pencils and knives and little things are organized. If you enjoyed this video, please do like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments what you thought about it. If you've got any tips or tricks that you think I might benefit from, please also leave that in the comments. Till next time, bye.